Thank you for joining us to our eChurch family, MFM family, and our friends around the world. We love you. God bless you. Now you know this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I know, Pastor, they are already glad because they are tuning into this service. God bless you. God bless you. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to go with me, go with me to the book of Isaiah. I want you to pray with me and roll through this as we build our case. Maybe a little different in, not different, you know how I preach, but it's going to be a lot of nuggets that are going to be dropping as we go through Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. If I'm forgetting anything, somebody please remind me. Um, it is here that he speaks of the restoration of Israel, God's people. I will read it this morning in your hearing in the NIV version. This is what the Lord says, in the time of my favor, I will answer you. In the day of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people to restore the land and the resign or appoint an instructor. Verse nine, to say to the captive, come out, and to those in darkness, be free. And they will feed beside the road and find pasture on every barren hill. They will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat down on them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all the mountains into roads and I will and my highways will be raised up. See, they will come from the from four and from the north and from the west. So fr some from the resign of Aswan, from the region of Aswan, I apologize, shouting for joy, you heavens and rejoice, you earth, burst into song, you mountains, for the Lord comfort his people and he will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten about me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she is born? Though she may forget. I want you to see it before I read it. I will not forget you. I will not forget you. See how I have engraved you on, my, on, the, hands of my, uh, on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Subject this morning is that God will not forget us. Say that God will, God will not forget us. A subtopic is what we're going to be working through is God will remember. God will remember. Each church, God will remember. He has not forgotten about us or about you. The ending verse, there's verse 16, where we stopped in this 49th chapter. I want to just drop some things to your mind. He speaks of the engravement on the palms of the hand. In the primitive time, the scribe would take and it would be his or their ability to cut into the stone or into a metal tablet. These laws that cannot be erased are removed. They are appointed decrees of a governing word. The walls here, he speaks of an implication of the Lord's protection. You see, in other words, God's got you covered. You're on the palms of his hands and he is going to protect you through all of this. And 2020 has been for me a very interesting year, an unexplainable at time year. Sometimes I don't know what's really going on. Giving many of these undeniables reasons to feel uh, alone in the middle of what you're going through. Many begin to question, where is God? And is God even, we've been concerned about us and wondering even if God really cares. He cares. Since March of this year, 2020, there has been uh, many hurdles that we have to cross or jump over. And in these hurdles that we are jumping, yet we have to stay vigilant in trusting God. Proverbs 3 and verse 5, it says it like this. We must trust in the Lord with all our heart. And lean not to our own understanding all the ways of knowledge him he shall direct your path the understanding here is the discernment discernment when i don't see things clearly 
but I can't go on my own discernment. I've done that a couple of times, but I must trust in the Lord and lean not to my own understanding. I must look to the Lord for directions. If you're going to make another move, don't make it without appealing to heaven first. Isaiah in this 49th chapter in verse uh, 8, particularly where we started, he writes the Lord is saying that in the time of favor, the set time, in the day of salvation or the day of deliverance, I will help you. This deliverance for Israel here in the backdrop, this talks about the reference to their captivity and deliverance from Babylonian exile. The returning now is back to the land that God has promised. God calls his people out of darkness and exile and invites them to journey back home to the land of promise. And as they are journeying, they are excited because God says he's going to help. Let me set you up before I lecture too long. And I want to tell somebody, no matter how low you've gone this year, you coming back. And God's going to bring you back to what he promised. They shall not want anything, he says in the text. There shall not be any need for food, water, or protection. He is, becomes the God of all provisions. You see, God himself will, will be their guide. That's what he's telling Israel. I'm going to guide you through this wilderness. It's interesting to see and to note in this passage that God, in this passage that God gives key statements that reminds us of the time that we're in right now that he is at hand. Watch what he says if you just chrome o, scale over it. He says, I will answer you. I have answered you. I have helped you. I have kept you. And I have given to you everything you need. It is the words of the Lord, the I haves of God are in past tense. That gives me revelation this morning that if he did it before, <laughs> he'll do it again. He can do it because he's God. And these show me that he is, this shows me that he's the God of provisions. Isaiah, the 49th chapter, is very exciting to read as you go through. And I like when he gets down to the latter part of the verse, talk about the prey in verse 25 being taken from the captive and the captive being delivered from the prey of the mighty. But in his 49th chapter, the prophet speaks of his laboring and his mission. He introduces us to the words, the servant of Jehovah, which gives us picture of the indication of the foreground of Jesus Christ. God calls his servants from the womb, Isaiah, and from his mother's belly. He knew him before he was born. He called him. Yet in this same context of Isaiah 49 and verse 4, Isaiah is feeling rejected against the complaint of feelings of defeat. He says that his labor seems to be in vain and his strength is gone. Who am I talking to? called by God, anointed by God, sentient by God, but right now I feel like all my labor is in vain. This feeling of complaint, no one wants to be rejected. They had rejected him. The feeling of being dismissed, uh, put in a place where you don't matter or you don't mean anything at all. Not meeting the standard feeling of rejection. Have you ever felt rejection? from people that you thought that accepted you, but all of a sudden they have rejected you. The prophet Isaiah is wondering that if you reject me, I wonder has God rejected me also? God will remember. So the Lord answers the servant in verse six through seven. The Lord says to him, I'm paraphrasing words of hope, encouragement and strength. For he is to remember that I am your strength. And I have chosen you every now and then you got to go back and realize who saved you, who called you, who has chosen you. You must be encouraged here when we must be encouraged when we're going through rough patches where things seem like there's a little darkness all around or the dark cloud of depression might even begin to come in when you can't see your way. But believe me that you're going to come out all right. At the end of this thing, God has already planned it. You might as well be shouting like George Jefferson and say it's going to be good. Matter of fact, it's going to be all good when you get to the end. Pastor, how do you know that better is the end of a thing than the beginning of the thing? The Lord makes more profound statements as we're seeing here in verse 8 and 9. 
and he goes through these profound statements in the latter part. He says, I will be a covenant to the people. Here is the idea of the foresight or the foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. I will raise and establish this land that has been come to ruin. A covenant is an agreement. It's ratified by blood. It's the cutting of the passing through the pieces of the sacrificing animal. You can't have a covenant unless you have blood. In Christ, it becomes the New Testament covenant after the Mosaic law is abolished. He says it like this in Matthew's gospel, in Matthew's gospel, the 26th chapter, in verse 28 and 29, I paraphrase, for this is my blood of the New Testament, our covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. But I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink of it in my Father's kingdom. Jesus Christ is speaking here of a future work of Christ where he will become king of king and lord of lords. I know it's cold outside, y'all listen inside. But he talks to him in Isaiah 49 about the light of the nation. He, Christ, is coming to be a light to the nation. The world is going to be looking to Jesus Christ. You've heard more on television this year about prayer, about let's all just come on back to church. Let's get back to our roots and our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've heard people that never talked about Jesus talked about Jesus this year. Yes, this whole thing has shifted man to understand you ain't coming out of this with just your virus. You're going to need a virus of faith to come out of this one. So it is the Lord here to speak to me. He's the light of all nations. Luke 1 and 79 helps us. He says, he came to give light to them that sat in darkness. This darkness of obscurity where one cannot see. Christ has come to be a light to them that set in darkness. It is Jesus who speaks in Acts 17, verse 25 to 26. He says, Jesus, which gave to all life and breath to all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of man that dwell on the face of the earth. So it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. You had to come from the blood of Jesus Christ. Adam came by one. Christ came as the second man, Adam, to redeem us from the man that fell. You can't hate your brother too hard. They might have a different pigmentation of skin because we all came from one blood. And that blood is through the blood of Adam. It is Adam and Eve that brought about life into the earth. So that makes us all cousin then and family then. So can we all just get along? It's only one blood, one blood. Isaiah talks further and he says that he says he will he was opened the eyes of them who uh, that are blinded of God's goodness. God's going to open your eyes this year. And goes on in this verses of 8 and 9 of Isaiah 49. It says, to release those that are in prison, who sat in darkness, bound up, and they can't get out and can't see their way out. But I'm coming to release them. I remember you when you were locked up in what you couldn't get out of. But I came with the source and the key to get you out. Reminds me even more so as we go on into this present time of the year 2020, how that we're going through darkness of this pandemic. And we're in a place where we can't see our way at times. But we have also, all, we're often faced with, uh, with the fact that people are watching us and watching how we're going to go through this. Do you realize that some people have made up in their mind that I ain't never going back to church because I've got church online now. I'll say to you again, if you can get the church, get the church. But you cannot substitute the sanctuary. It's something about the house of God that you can't find in your house. Now, I know he's in your house, but it's something about being in the house of God. People are watching our attitude, how we're going through this darkness. You see, our lives, like the children of Israel, are going to be used by God. There are people are going to see us coming out of this prison of darkness. So today, to, so today I decree you're walking out of setbacks. You're walking out of depressions. You can say man, whatever you want to. You're walking out of family problems. You're walking out of financial burdens. You're walking out of sickness and diseases. 
You're walking out of headaches and heartaches. You can say amen whenever you want to. You're walking out of grief and whatever. Whatever the enemy has done to lock you up and bound you, bend you over and put you in this place of darkness today right now in the name of Jesus, you're coming out. Your mind and your heart is going to be all right. And I've served the notice to say again, not as a cliche, and you will not look like what you've been through. God's going to free you completely as you come out of this. When God remembers, he does unique things. In verse 13 of Isaiah 49, he calls all creation to visit into the song of praise. Giving creation an understanding that when I begin to move and deliver my people Israel, there becomes a cosmic effect. Heaven and earth and the mountains and the forest, everyone is called in to do what they've been called to do, is to show forth the praise and the glory of God. The elements of God's creation are invited to come to this praise party. God's compassion is now joint hand in hand with his people to help them on the journey, letting them know that I'm going on this journey with you. The prophet Isaiah is meet, met again with a profound word in verse 15, seeing the alienation and the, the vulnerability of Zion. He sees them there and he gives them this powerful implication are these intimate um, image that he sets before them. He says a mother is nursing a child. This prophet was a cold guy. He said, let me show you something you can relate to because you can't see what I'm saying. So he picks up a baby and say, he, oh, yes, she is right there. Pat that baby for me. Thank you. You have me preach. He said, look at this mother holding this baby. It's intimate image now becomes something that they cannot deny. God is nursing. He's the nursing mother for the anguish of Zion. Some of you, oh God, have you right about here right now. He knows you need a little burp, but you need some more milk also. He knows you've been hurting, and I'm not going to walk around like you don't live in this house. Mama had nine children, but the one that was hurting the most, she pushed the other eight away and went to that one. Anybody need God to show up this morning and hold you like a dear mother? He's a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. This we see here, the natural nature of God is the natural nature of a woman to have compassion for her child. The umbilical cord is cut, but is never separate. Some women will go to jail for years to sit outside to see their child. That's a mother. Even though everybody else is saying, give up on that boy. Let him stay locked up in there. Long as he's locked up, I can feel it because I'm locked up. That's a real mama right there. I'm going to stay with you until you get out of this. If you get back in it again, you might but I want you to know that I love you all the way to life. A mother here has compassion for her children, but it is much more, is much limited, is much more limitless with God. God's compassion goes much further. Using the words that Zion used, he said, yeah, she may forget you, but I will not forget you. That's my running word this morning. I don't care what it looks like. You can just shake your head with confidence. God will not forget me. It's going down, but God will not forget me. I'm crying, but God will not forget me. People that wrote me off, but God would not forget me. And if God won't forget me, I'm going to be all right. This presence of God's mercy is highlighted here in this shrinking picture. He goes on in verse 16 and he gives a more striking, piercing picture. See, I have subscribed you on the palms of my hands. And he said, I want you to see this. Somebody say, get a glimpse. I want you to get a glimpse by faith that you are in good hands. God help me preach it in this morning. I want you to start seeing yourself that you are in, matter of fact, tell yourself I'm in good hands. If I've been inscribed on the hand of God, I am in good hands. I remember the four, the, the four great, the, four, the gratefulness of God. It is in the simplicity of God to know that he has covered us in his hand. There might be a feeling of rejection and anguish that may be coming over you, but in the intimacy of worship, you can bring all that down. God is coming back for his people 
whose name he has written in the palms of his hand. This is called the indelible grace of God. It cannot be removed because I'm written on his hand. Some of you have taken and used a black sharpie and put a little note on your hand so you wouldn't forget. And all of a sudden you're in the store and you say, oh yes, I got to get this because I got memory on my hand. God has inscribed us on his hand and it cannot be removed. It cannot be washed off and it cannot be blotted out. It cannot be disallowed or counseled. It cannot be unforgivable or and annihilated because we're on the hand of God. This subject speaks to me this morning about the grace of God and how he is most beautiful expression of his love to put me on the palm of his hand. There are moments when you have to see God in all, see him in it all, no matter what it looks like. You must see God in it all. Uh, you must understand that you must hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand build your hopes on things eternal but whatever you do hold on to God's unchanging hand but be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock no matter what the devil is trying to do you in a good place right about now just keep telling yourself and just keep saying to yourself my name is written on the palms of God's hand and I'm in good hands this morning. This ain't all state. This ain't all state. This is Jesus state. I'm in good hands this morning. I know the devil's mad. He want me to give up. Want me to throw in the towel. But when I checked the record last week, I'm still written in the hands of God. And I'm not just going to be all right. I'm going to be great because he is a great good God and everything he makes when he finish he calls it great very great so it is here that we see the conclusion of coming in a moment he says in St. John the 10th chapter verse 28 through 29 I paraphrase neither shall any man snatch them out of my hands the devil been trying to get to you but every time he get to the hand of God he joins MC Hammer and say can't touch this. This belongs to God. Don't act like God's child. Don't look like God's child. Don't sing like God's child. Just a mess up all the time. But this one right here can't touch it. No one will snatch you out of my hand. My father's hand. My father's hand. He said I've given them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither will any man snatch them out of my hand. My father who gave them me is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of my father's hand. My times are in his hand. Friend, every time you feel depressed, feel depressed defeated or depleted like you ain't gonna pay these bills remember what hand you are in and know that God's gonna give you the ability to get it done somebody holler I'm in good hands I'm in good hands and no one can snatch me out of his hand God knows your name and he will remember you and we see the subject of the scripture as I come to my end here in the book of first Samuel's the first chapter and verse 19 we see a setup of a story of Elkion, Elk 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 I'm sorry, Elkion and his wife Hannah. And they're going up, Hannah means grace, Elkion. And they're going up in 1 Samuel's, the first chapter, in verse 19. They rose up early in the morning to go to worship. And they said, in, it said they're in worship before the Lord, and they returned back home to Ramah. But Hannah, while she was going up to worship with her husband, remember, she was barren. But she went in to worship and began to pray and ask God to take care of her barrenness and in worship Eli began to look at her the priest and saw her in her anguish and her worship seeing her mouth was moving but there were no words coming out baby worship can get ugly it ain't cute when you go into worship tears will come out and water will run from other places when you go really into worship so she's down there in worship and Eli looks over and says woman are you drunk she said, no, I ain't drunk, prophet. A man of God, I'm not drunk. 
I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. And the Bible says when they got back home, the Lord remembered her. It is in the place of worship that you find yourself intimate with God. And you realize that the Lord gave her Samuel, which is that I heard you. When God remembers, he hears you. Worship is that thing of a great degree. It moves you out of the way. You wake up every morning in worship. You go every day in praise. And you also realize that you have meditation and fellowship with God. Friend, I want you to hear me before I close. Remember this. You are in good hands. Every time you go into worship, remember God has got your name on his hands. The Bible says in Psalms 112, he says, your seed shall be mighty in the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Cornelius and his house was believing God for salvation, began to pray, and the Bible says everybody in Cornelius house got blessed. I'm almost there. You better wake up and catch this. When God remembers, it is going to predicate what you connected to. But if connected to the right person that God's remembering, everybody in the house going to be blessed. Surely somebody in this church this morning, God's got you on his mind and got you on his hand and if God remembers you we're gonna all get blessed watch what the Lord does here Peter comes to the house of Cornelius walks in and begin to pray with him the Holy Spirit hits the whole house family and friends got saved I want the Lord to remember me that everybody in my house get blessed my neighborhood get blessed the people down the street get blessed because God remembered me God is mindful of us. God's got us on his mind. Don't believe that trick of the enemy saying God has forgotten about you. You cannot look at an indelible print that's on your hand and forget what you're supposed to do. God's looking at you right now. He knows what you're going through. He knows your agony of worship. He knows your pain and your suffering. And I promise you like a mother, I'm coming to see about you. Come on, baby. Don't worry about it. Mama got it. I can handle it. Don't worry about the pressure. I'm going to show you how to get through it. I'll fight it until you can fight it. I'll whoop it until you can whoop it. But I'm not going to let you go down like that. I have not forgot about you. I've seen every tear. I've seen every cry. I've seen every setback. I've seen every hit the enemy tried to hit you with. I've seen the devil trying to shut you down. And I'm coming to tell you God remembered us. God did not forget us in the midst of all this pain, all this suffering, death everywhere. But God remembered my house. God remembered my family. God remembered my children. I decree and declare this is the moment and this is the season that God will remember no matter what it looks like, no matter what the devil's saying it is. God's going to remember me because I'm on his hand. I'm in his hand. God's going to remember God's going to bring us through. God's going to bring us out. Because that's what God does. He is the God of provision. He will remember you. He shall remember you. He's got you in good hands. You're going to be all right. Because God said so. Give God some praise in this church. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. My God, my God, my God. Am I preaching to myself this morning? Now, who am I preaching to then? Who am I talking to? Wave at somebody and say, God's got me on his mind. He's up to something. He's out to do a breakthrough. He's out to do a turnaround. He's out to do a bounce back. He needs somebody that can represent him in the midst of a ruined time. Me, Lord, bring me through. Bring me out. Bring me over. Bring me up. This is my season. This is my time. God will remember. will remember God will remember come on get on your feet get on your feet hold your hands up in this house father your faithfulness 
is from generation to generation to generation. I feel like sometimes you have forgotten about me. My God. But your word can't lie. A mother may forget, but you will never forget.